Uh -huh. Good morning to one and all present here. It's my immense pleasure to introduce our chief guest of the day, Dr. K.C. Chakrabarti. Dr. K.C. Chakrabarti, a seasoned and accomplished banker with over three decades of experience. Before taking up the current responsibilities, Dr. Chakrabarti was chairman and managing director of Punjab National Bank and Indian Bank for two years each. He was also the chairman of Indian Banks Association for a brief period. Dr. Chakrabarti has outstanding academic credentials in MSc Statistics and holds a doctorate in Statistics from Banaras Hindu University. Dr. Chakrabarti started his career as a teacher and researcher at the Banaras Hindu University and went on to have long and distinguished career of 26 years at the Bank of Baroda. Dr. Chakrabarti handled diverse portfolios like banking operations and administration, planning, economic research, investment banking, integrated treasury operations, risk management, corporate accounts, international banking, global syndication, etc. He was a chief executive looking after United Kingdom operations of the Bank of Baroda for three years before being elevated as Executive Director of Punjab National Bank in August 2004. Subsequently, Dr. Chakrabarti assumed the office of CMD of Indian Bank in June 2005 around in both the banks. Dr. Chakrabarti's current assignments include guiding and overseeing the areas pertaining to supervision of banks, currency management, financial stability, customer service, rural credit and human resource management at Reserve Bank of India. He represents India in the Financial Stability Board as a member. Dr. Chakrabarti, the Chairman of Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited and Chairman of Advisory Committee of College of Agricultural Banking. Dr. Chakrabarti was closely connected with various institutes like National Housing Bank, Oriental Insurance Company Limited, Confederation of Indian Industry CII, Central Depository Service Limited, Exim Bank, National Institute of Bank Management, Agricultural Finance Corporation Limited, Indian has Chairman of Committee of RBI Working Group on Timely Rehabilitation and Flow of Credit for Rehabilitation, Chairman of IBS Subcommittee on Agribusiness and financial inclusion, chairman of CII's National Committee on Banking, chairman of Working Group on Rehabilitation of Sick SMEs, member of RBI in High Level Committee to review the lead bank scheme and improve its effectiveness, member of Subcommittee of Central Board of Directors of RBI to study the issues and concern in microfinance sector. Dr. Chakrabarti was a regular visiting faculty in various training institutions in India and delivered talks on wide range of topics like risk management, asset liability management, credit plans, lead bank scheme, profit planning, cost control, etc. Sir, may I request you to take over the session. Reverend Father Sebastian, Principal Reverend Father Josh P. A. Financial Administrator and Head of the Department of Social Work, Reverend Father Augustine George, Head of the Department, Department of Computer Science, Professor Aloysius Edward, Program Coordinator, Ms. Prajwali, Student Coordinator, Faculty Members, Students, and I am also surprised the representatives of the media <laughs> and my colleagues. I am very happy to be here today to interact with young minds and share my views on the current state of our economy and the way forward. Now, this is an interactive session which I am told at the beginning. I always like to interact with the students because that gives a different view. Students generally are rebellion, they think differently. Next one and a half hour I am going to interact with you. The success of interactive session, session depends on how do you interact with me. But I think the format or the sitting arrangement which we have uh, introduced here or 
arranged. It is not a very good, uh, you see, uh, or very convenient for the interactive session. But anyhow, I'll try to be, make, provoke you as much as possible. But it depends all of you, and this is, you have to take the best. Now, you see, the topic which I am assigned is that, and now for the media, you see, these are strictly bichar manthan. These are all views and opinions. These are not the news. I am not going to make any announcement. So don't become, uh, you see, the uh, shocked and surprised that you have all come to cover up the event. But you all individuals representing various media, if they want to participate in the bichar manthan along with the students, they are most welcome. How do you report not this is that thing? Based on that, whatever you generate, that is your skill. How to report? And you see, based on your skill only in future, I will see that whether you can be part and part parcel of such vichar mantras. <laughs> so that's the challenge. <laughs> now, let me say that, you see, look, I have been asked to say about current economic scene, a way forward. One good thing is that I am not an economist. Because when you talk of economists, two economists will give three different views of the economic situation. So, that we don't know what is the kind. You have to make your own assessment. How do you feel the guy? You see, anything which you say, if you have the half glass of water. Now somebody will say that this is half empty. Somebody may say it is half full. Somebody may say it is half glass of water. Now, how do you look into that full, empty or half? It depends on how do you look into that. Same is the true in the current economy. But let me say, I am not disappointed. But I am pain about the state of affairs. But we are not disappointed. Now, how is our economy is doing? The hard statistics which I cannot hide that our growth rate this year will be somewhere, you see, say, around 7%. I don't make a big difference between the 6.9 or 7.1 or below little bit 7, it does not make, but it has come down. Which we are aspiring for 8.59% growth, it has definitely slowed down, absolutely no doubt in that. And next year also, we don't see that there will be a spectacular turnaround, at least that is not seen, if we continue to work the way we are working. Now, in that if you see our major drivers of the economic growth is coming from the services sector. One way it is good, more growth coming from the services sector is we are transforming towards the knowledge economy. That's a good. But unfortunately if you see the history of the development of the all the countries across the globe, no country has become a very strong country without going through the manufacturing growth. And that is where the industrial growth is not very, you see, our that share in the total GDP is only 17-18%. As you know that Government of India plans it or we all collectively plan it to make it 25% and unless we step up our manufacturing growth, shift the surplus labor or when we say disguise employment in the agriculture sector, because still agriculture contributes only to 14-15%. I don't know whether you are aware or not. You must have read in your textbook that agriculture used to contribute to 50% of the Indian econ GDP. Now it is only 14-15%. But dependent on the people on agriculture is still 50% or something more. So that is where the poverty in the rural area, that is the, the issue, migration of the people. Now those are the issues that they are structural balances. We want to address this issue. So we need to move the people from agriculture to the manufacturing and make the agriculture more productive. Because if we want to achieve, agriculture is growing at 2% on an average, 2 to 2.2. And issue is that whether 6.9 is a good growth, yes, global standard, it is a good growth. I have no problem. Even with this crisis, the global economic growth may be around 2-3%, at the most 4%, but as compared to that, 6.9, around 7, it appears reasonable. But if we say that our per capita income is only somewhere near $1,200, but the China's may be four times more than us, 
There are countries, I visited once the Norway, that the per capita income is $75,000. And we have to catch up with them. We need to work much harder. And believe me, with this per capita income, we will not survive. The society, a peaceful, with harmony, tranquility, the society cannot survive with this 5-6% growth. That is what is the concern. 6.7%, 8% growth per se is not bad. But we need to grow by at least 9-10% to for the next 20 years if you want to become a middle income country. That's the challenge. Now, whenever you talk of economic situation along with the growth, it comes the inflation. Our inflation is also high. It is now slowing down, but it is slowing down temporarily. And we will be not able to achieve 9-10% growth unless we bring down the inflation to less than 5%. That is what is the targeted level of the Reserve Bank of India. Now many people criticize us if we have any question. But if you see the analyze the history, no country has recorded high growth with high inflation. So if we want to grow, if we want to have higher growth rate, your inflation has to come down. That, that's, that's what we must understand and that's the effort of the district. But then, simply my saying or Reserve Bank Governor saying or the Prime Minister or Finance Minister saying inflation is come down will not come down. Now, for inflation coming down and which will only ensure higher growth, there is only one, what we call Mool Mantra. My lesson that we need to work harder. How the inflation comes down? Because many people say this inflation is supply side inflation. That means demand for the goods is most and the supply of the goods is not. That is why prices is going up. People say the poor people have started eating the protein, milk, this thing or they have started eating the uh, vegetable and prices is going up. The, if that is the case, the prices is going up, you produce more at lower cost. The prices of education is going up. So what is the solution? You give the good education at lower price. Now, so you have to become more efficient. I am very happy that this Christo Jayanti College, they have a tradition, the father told me that their fees are moderate structure, they are not charging like many others, and thereby you are contributing to bring down the inflation. That's my congratulations to you. And helping the development of in the beginning. But all of you, we all of us need to work hard. And we need to produce more at lower cost, then only inflation will come down. And this is the only thing what I say. So anybody who wants that inflation should come down must look into that. What work you are doing, at what price, and can you produce more by taking less salary or by charging less. So that is one way of we can do that. How are you going to do that? If you don't want to reduce your salary because our salary level is not that good, you can double the work. That's what I'm saying. So salary you can still continue to have 20%. Right? That's the only thing. You see, we have many other problems. We have a current account deficit. That means what is our expenses are more, our income is less. So we have to borrow money from outside. Now, you cannot become a strong nation or a strong household, always if you are borrowing. Suppose you are borrowing every day to your neighbor. I think you will lose the respect that what is this, is the thing is that borrowing. Now that's another problem, so our current account deficit needs to go down. But then everywhere has a silver lining. One silver lining is that our current account deficit is high, but we import 50 billion to 60 billion gold every year. Unfortunately, this is reflected in the current account transaction. But I think gold is a capital investment. Now, if you can find the ways and means to utilizing the gold productively, not using on the ornament, on the ladies' bodies or in the cupboard, then we can get a lot of things we can do that. Now, how do we do that? That is what I see that students, the management students of the Christo Jayanti College, how we can convert this weakness of the Indian economy into the strength. That is another challenge. What I say, open air research topic. How can do that? Mutri is doing, trying to do that job. Uh, Muna, uh, what is that? Uh, Muttu Finance and Munappar, all are trying to do that. How much they are trying to do, I don't know. But they are trying to do that. But what we need that, we must, want, we want that, our commercial banks also must do that. They must 
utilize the goal to monetize the goal, that's one thing, so party. Another great area you see, in our current deficit, other than the oil, we are not able to produce the oil, uh, so we have to import the oil, this bill may be about 160 billion US dollar every year, that's the thing. Figure, maybe I said that don't quote the figure because I am not sitting here with the figure. There's a thing, but it is an oil bill, this is a major thing. But another area you see, where we are spending a lot of money, where the money is going out, is the education. Every year, this poor country is spending at least 15 billion US dollars for sending our students for education to Australia, UK, United States of America. Where you have such world-class college, Krishna Janti College is available here. Yeah. People are, are like this. And we can create much more. This is another area where we can create the opportunities. Then 15 billion a year current account deficit can be reduced. But still, I consider investment in the education is a capital investment. In the investment in the quality of the people, improvement of quality, we are considering current account, I say, even if they go there and if they contribute, and they, many of them have contributed, immensely they have contributed, and that's why what I say, that today our problem is not brain drain. Can we convert it into the brain gain? Because earlier what we are saying, if a person has become doctor, we have spent some 80 lakhs rupees for making you a doctor, he goes to UK and the people who are getting the benefit, UK people are getting benefit. So they must come back and work in India. Today we say no, it is not necessary. Person can remain anywhere in the world, but he feels something for the country, his expertise and knowledge can be utilized. Today the doctor morning can take a flight, come to the Bombay, make a knee operation or heart surgery, go back to the London again. Same thing, this is possible. Or through a video conference, you can guide the, some doctors here. So this is what has happened. Technology makes it that if our people who have gained something across the globe, if their expertise is knowledge is available, technology, communication technology makes it possible to their utilize. How to utilize them? Again, we have to think on them. They are thinking and thereby giving more flip to the economy. So to, to today, this, this advantage is not the brain drain. I call it brain gain. In many one of you who are here, don't worry where do you get the job. This worry was there at my, when I passed up the university, it was a big problem how to get the job. Now our economy, why our growth rate is low? There are many factors. One of the main factors is that we are looking for a job. But when you get the job, we don't work. <laughs> How the economy will grow? Now, there are three types of jobs. One is where without working you can get the salary. That job is, no, no, politics, you have to work hard. You, 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 wrong notion. I'm very happy you must contribute. A politician does not, you see, he work at least 19 hours a day. Please study like a politician. You will be the first, you will rank first. So don't criticize the politician. One set of people for whom I have highest respect in this country, the politician, because none of the politicians I have seen work less than 19 hours a day. For what purpose is working, that is different. <laughs> so at least this good quality of the politician, we all must emulate. We must work hard. You see, look, one day I was with a minister at the five o'clock. For example, when I was in Delhi, you see, you see, we have to go, they call their bosses, if they call, I have to go there. And without anything, I have full respect for them. Then at the five o'clock, he was showing something in inconvenience. Chakravarti, I am not feeling well. I said, what has happened? No, I am feeling feverish and I am having the cold. I said, why don't you go home and take rest? So what you are saying, I have to attend three marriages. 
I said, what's the problem if we don't go to the manager? Hey, you person can say, he will say, minister has called me, I have no time, so I could not come. I have to go because I have to fight the election and these people, if I go to one marriage, I have to go all the three marriages. And I was really feeling sorry for that person. That look, I could have in the conveniently said that, for example, the principal is inviting me for this for so many times. I say, I'm not getting the time. We can give any excuse. So that's what I'm saying that we need to work hard, but I, I'm coming back, you see. It, it is good if somebody has diverted me. Look, <laughs> one type of job is where you get the job but you don't work. That is not in the politician. Politician provide that type of job. It is available in the government, at least in my time. It is available in the banks, at least public sector bank. It was available in the LIC. It was available in the railway. It was available in the reserve bank. All these places, abundantly, this number of jobs are available. Unfortunately, those type of jobs are not available today. That's the problem of the employment. But there are second type of job that if you work for four hours, you will get four hours salary. Market related job, that job is available plenty across the globe anywhere. And third type of job that you don't seek for a job, you provide the job. That means you start your own enterprise. And we have enough policies. Somebody was telling MSC, SME segment, agriculture, banks, we reserve bank, we have created, we have made such policies that banks encourage the people to take up this activity and that activity. So what I say, when you are looking for a job, first type of job has disappeared. Don't look for that type of job. Some jobs will be available, some of you will join. But majority of ways across the globe, second type of job is available in plenty. If you can get the good quality education of world standard, job is not a problem. And if anybody tells me I'm not getting a job, he is not ready to work. Yes, he or he is looking for first type of job. The second and third type of job is available. So be confident. Take the best quality education, which all these fathers are giving you, Sebastian, Augustine, uh, Joes, uh, Edward, all other, many others, the faculty members who are sitting there, have that and if you have, believe me, job is not problem across the globe. Indians for the next 20 years will be welcomed anywhere in the world. But for that, what is? You have to have the necessary skill and expertise. And that's the purpose of this education. And one of the reasons why I come to the educational institution to convey this thing. Don't worry what is the current economic scene, what is happening. You are absolute, your future is safe if you get a good education. And believe me, our current economic scene, I am not worried whether the growth is 6.7% or 7%. From 1900 to 1950, our growth rate was not even 1% or around 1%. In fact, from 1800 to 2000, our growth, growth rate was negative. We have grown from 1950 to 1970 or 1980, that Professor Rajkrishna Hindu rate of growth, that is less than 4%. In fact, he once said that India cannot grow beyond 4%, beyond Hindu rate of growth. Now, 1980 to 1990, we grew something around 5%. 1990 to 2000, we have grown something more than 5%. And last five years, if you take away this last five years, our growth rate was more than 8%. So if you say the longer term, it is, there is no problem, we are progressing. But if I see that in 1000 AD or 800 AD, India is contributing to 31% of the world GDP. It is today less come down to less than one percent. From where, where to where we have fallen, and that is what. What worry is that? Now, if we have to achieve thirty-one percent, I don't know in my lifetime will be able to achieve. Neither another hundred years will be able to achieve or not. But we have come down. Now that is one region because we have missed the industrial revolution, and second issue we are very complacent. In the agrarian society, we are one of the most prosperous country but we become complacent. Now, what I say, if our current economic situation has to improve, we have to slip complacency, and what our forefathers have rested for the thousand years, we have to work hard at least for the next hundred years. And then only, and that opportunity has come today. 
and this opportunity is available to you all students. If in the last 1500 years, any time India has an opportunity to establish in the world arena, the time has come, next 20 years is the opportunity. Even without doing anything, we may grow by 6-7% for next 20 years, but we will really face the problem after 20 years. But if we can grow by 10% for the next 20 years, the 21st century is India's century. And you are all, you can make it possible, provided only one thing, we need to work hard and we need to have improve our quality and skill and we must convert it into a global center. That's the, that's the basic thing what I try to say. So don't get much worried about what is happening. See what are the opportunities and globally. Because why? We are the only country where more than 50% population is less than 25, 25 years of age. 33% population is less than 15 years of age. We are the only country in the world where the dependency ratio will come down for the next 20 years. And we'll be having only working population, people who can work hard. But believe me, today wherever I go, people say, we don't get people. Good quality people is not available. I was just saying that principal was saying we are not getting good quality teachers. They are moving away from this. They are going to this thing. You go to the bank, you say that, why, hey, why this work is not done? You say, there is not adequate number of people. Go to the government, any office, you say, why this is not done? We don't have adequate number of people. You go to the police, that why so many cases are pending, cases are, you say, no, police force is also less. Security force, they say, no, we are not have adequate number of people. I only know one thing. In this country, one thing is not in short supply, that is the number of people. <laughs> so that is the challenge before our education system, not only this college, down the line. How do you make the people productive and this is the thing. And if we can do that, and that is what is one re major research topic I'm giving, that how do we make this thing, then we have an opportunity. And believe me, if we miss this opportunity, this opportunity may not come for the last th next another thousand, two thousand years. And one good thing is happening, that this is becoming a knowledge society. And in the knowledge society, the basic ingredient which are necessary, that is prevalent. You see, you must have good knowledge of logic, mathematics and basic technology. All three systems, we are relatively stronger today. And we have one more advantage, people know and understand, speak, read and write English as compared to many other non-English speaking nations. Now, if we can leverage on these things, use our education institution like this, whatever this society has created, like this we require either 20,000, 30,000 institutions. And if we can use and skill and utilize this, or these are all possible, then don't worry. We, we will grow by 10 percent, that capacity we are having. And believe me, there is no deficiency in our system, except that we don't work hard. Now, what should we do to make these things to happen? So, don't worry about that. We have next 20 years, we have a plenty of opportunities, this is the thing. First I say that you must have good quality education and create the educational opportunities for people. Second, make the people skill. But this will not happen automatically. Even with the all good quality education, the number of engineers which we are producing, 75% of our engineers are not employable. 60% of our doctors, they cannot diagnose a disease after getting the medical qualification. Sir, you are saying now what is happening, the commercialization of education, 10 legs they are paying, but they are not able to diagnose a disease. 60%. So we have to improve the quality of education. And for that, how the quality can be improved, only way students have to work hard. And although, so, second issue is that after you have to work hard. Third issue, you have to set complacency. 
You cannot be. You see, somebody was telling that uh, we have done wonderfully well, so not a single bank has failed. Are if you have no bank, no bank will fail. <laughs> so not that it is just to me. There is no question. You see, look. One of the reasons is that our 60% people, our banks are not deal with the smaller people. They have not taken any risk. Now, if you have not taken the risk, where the question of failing arises? Fifty percent population are not having access to a bank account. Ninety percent population are not having access to credit. We are all saying that, saying that we are saying that banks have not taken a risk. In the USA, you say bank every year banks are failing. It is not this crisis every year. So the the next point, what I am saying, we must allow the people to fail also. One of the greatest problem of this society, we are not willing to accept failure, but we are a failed society. <coughs> and that's what any, when anybody says that nothing has happened, we have not failed, it worries me that that means we are complacency. We must allow, and that is what you cannot create a knowledge society unless you allow the principle to work. I give it simple, it is very easy to say, but very difficult to practice. And that's why I am telling you that you cannot change the economy just like that. You see, every year I tell you, when a student is happy, what the percentage of mark you get, then you are happy. See, this is the interaction I am supposed to have. <laughs> and with 100% mark also people are not getting admission. They say in the Stephen College somewhere I read. I don't know that. But I know young boys and girls, if they get 80% mark, they are so much scolded by their parents that they are forced to commit suicide. And every day after the examination result is declared, I see at least few things in newspaper. But how many people know that Einstein has failed in the mathematics? Uh, what I am saying, society as well, so we must accept failure. All moral stories we are not. Failures are the foundation of the success, all these things. But we are not ready to practice that. So we must look into what I am saying, we must need to experiment. Deliberately you should not fail. You see, that does not mean that you say that, sir, one of the person, great fellow has come for Vichar Mantan, and he has told us that you fail, there is no problem. So we will not now study. <laughs> but believe me, when the marks, your marks vary from zero to hundred, na? Huh? Zero to hundred. Yes. Now, why somebody cannot get thirty percent mark? I tell you, you see the many successful people in the life who are earning much more, who are contributing much more to the society. They are not in the eighty, ninety percent people. They are the people maybe below fifty percent mark they have got. mean you will not aspire for getting more than 90 percent mark. <laughs> but if something has happened in the center, second thing you see, you must look and you can ask any people, you go travel, take any, that is what I say, Bichar Mantan, what is your qualification, how much mark you have got. In fact, people who get too much good mark and all the brilliant people in that society, they do not help anything to build up anything in the society. They become self-centered. So next thing, save complacency, work hard, accept failure, and work for the community society. Try to place the society community ahead of you, not self-interest, but the society and community. That does not mean you should not look your self-interest. You must have necessary food, shelter, but after achieving something, look for what is happening to the society. Unfortunately, this sense is less in our society and especially among the privileged section of the society. Now, that is 
is what I said. It is not 7%, 8% growth is not that bad. But this growth process is not inclusive. And that's what we are trying to say. That these results of proofs of this growth must go to this entire community. And our country is the first country to accept inclusive growth as an objective of our national plan. Now today the entire world is saying that whatever the world disruption, economic fall down, social unrest, geopolitical disturbances at defined part of the globe, all this is because of lack of inclusive growth. And that is one issue which we are pursuing very vigorously along with the government of India. Inclusive growth cannot take place without the financial inclusion. But that is a defined story. I did not want to say uh, much about that. But what I am to say, for, we cannot build up an inclusive society unless those who are privileged, they have a sense of compassion for the poor. Now, whatever, wherever we achieve the good education, Think of the people who are studying here. Think of this college where we have studied and what we have done for the development of this college. You see, they are, this college is giving you education at maybe one-fourth, one-fifth, one-tenth price in which you could have got a commercial education. Now, having got this thing, what do I do so that this college, because father was telling me that, look, we are not very sure how, are you, how long we will be able to continue that this thing. Now what I say, father, if they are the brilliant student you are producing, and they are, if they have a sense of compassion for this particular college, your future is safe. Absolutely there is no problem. But they cannot forget once they pass out of this university, getting a certificate recommendation who was a good student, they forget for their entire life this college. So, we must have the compassion for the people who have allowed, helped us to go ahead in our life. That's another thing we must look into that. These are the various stages we have to do that. Now, one more problem. Our social outlook has to undergo a change. If we want to improve our economic condition, in our country, there is no dignity of labor. I don't know how to treat a class four staff in this college, in this institution. How do we treat a driver in this institution? Do we treat them as a knowledge worker? I tell you, I was in UK. Somebody has said, now, I had the, when I, it was a luxury, and this luxury is possible because I belong to public sector in this country. So I had a software driven car in London. But my driver is driver only during the office hour. In the evening, he comes with me anywhere. He will also sit me with the table and have the food, drink, all these things. With that, he will take out his tie, wear it, and he will come. Can we treat our people, the people who are there, like this in our society? If we don't do, you will be not able to create an inclusive society, and that requires the change in the total outlook. Now, what I'm saying, many of these things don't blame the others. We have to start practicing ourselves. The various, we have a tremendous capacity to distribute the society between the, this thing, that thing. We have to make it more inclusive thing. That's what one, 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 one of the things we must be able to do that. Who is considered a good student in the class? So in a house, we consider a well-behaved, well-mannered boy or girl. Who? Who is very obedient? No. Who does not question? Huh? How can he question me? 
Now this is another thing, we have to change the social outlook, culture outlook. We must allow the people to ask the question. We must encourage the dissent. We must ask the student to say to the teacher, hey, what you are saying is wrong. <laughs> Very difficult. But what do you say? You have called me, invited me to speak and say that current economic scene, how we can convert. So I am not worried about but unless, you see, look, if we are trying to create a knowledge society, first thing is that you cannot create a knowledge society unless you encourage dissent. But dissent does not mean, this is what, again I am questioning, dissent is you give your view, but hierarchy of administration will remain. This is just a ship is sinking. You have to obey the command of the captain of the ship. What you say, you must be, otherwise ship will really sink. You can give your view, but once the decision is taken, that decision has to be implemented. When I am saying that dissent, that does not mean I have given dissent and I will not do that. No, after dissent, the line of command, there will be a boss will be there, who or your whosoever is there. But after listening, you debate with him, do anything, but once the decision is taken, teacher has said this job has to be done or this is right, your job is over so long as you can leave the school, that is a different thing. But so long as you are in the school, you have to abide by that thing that yes, having said that, that is what he says, so long the teacher is there, that is what is the view and that is the right view has to prevail. That does not mean teacher will not introspect. How many will be able to convert this society? I don't see much question from you. This is all what I have to say. Some of these things, if you can practice in the life, you believe me, our future is safe. Absolutely no problem. There is a great opportunity for each one of you the 21st century can be India's century, provided some of the things which I have said you can practice and emulate in your life. Wherever I go to address the students, you see, I give a final message because all will be passing out and will be going to the, in, the, in a year, in two years, in three years, depending on what is the duration. But you will be facing the world. And I give only three advice to the students. If you remember this, you will be able to face the real life, real sector life in a much more bold and confident manner. First thing what I say, be literate. I said that I have come here Father is looking at me that I am addressing the students of MBA and graduation, post-graduation, I am asking them, the people, to be literate. Yes. But what I am saying, this literacy is not a first generation literacy, second generation literacy, but the third generation literacy. Now, I will explain what is this, what do you mean by the uh, third generation literacy. You see, first generation literacy, it was before 500, 600 years when the a technology came or a innovation came, what you call the printing machine. That made a large number of people literate across the globe. Otherwise, it was the privilege of the few people in the society to be educated. Either the priests, Brahmins, or the monarchs or the kings. They are, it is only their jurisdiction to get education, not the common people. But it came because of this scientific innovation, what we call it. So then what we say, before 50 years, even today we say, if somebody cannot read and write, he is illiterate. Now that literacy we are removing, and I think our aim is there to make the entire country literate in that sense. That is the first generation of literacy. Second generation of literacy, we start talking. When new type of instruments start, innovation, technological innovation start taking place, more so in 1970s, when an instrument, a box called personal computer was invented. 
believe me, many of your nephew and niece will not consider you as literate, and they will not consider their grandparents as literate if they, not, they do not know how to run a computer. So that is what we call computer literacy. iPad literacy, mobile literacy. How many of you use the mobile? All. How many of you can use all the functionalities of that mobile? Whatever mobile, you see, today mobile can do all these things. Believe me, we are not using all the functionality of mobile. We may be using, at least I use only getting a message, getting a phone, making a telephone call, sending the contact or sending a SMS, this thing. But today, the mobile can do hundreds of things, and it can do many things. But many of us are, we are illiterate. So far as the technology gadget is concerned. So, B, B I presume, that you are much more literate than me, than this electric gadgets are concerned, mobile, you call iPad, you call, but still we are not fully literate at the beginning. But what is most important? That is the second generation is the, how do you use the full functionality of the, all the electronic gadgets? Third generation of literacy came before 10 years. <laughs> we are an information literate, illiterate society. And more so is applicable to media. When daily I see their show, I see that they are all information illiterate. <laughs> all of us are information illiterate because we don't know how to use the information. In fact, major drag our people will say, we don't have information. Now, if you have information, you say it is not correct information, so I don't use. Now, these are all because we are information literate. Now, First thing, you will be never able to improve the quality of data information unless you use the data information for decision making. But what you say, I don't use data information, why? Because its quality is incorrect. It, it, its quality is doubtful. So that's the first thing. This is, what I'm saying, these are the examples, how are we? Information illiterate. Every day you are giving wrong statement. If you, if you interact with me with some figures, in five minutes I will prove that how information illiterate you are. Now, if you want to be successful in the knowledge society, so that is what I say, my first advice to you, because you will be not able to, our next society will be the knowledge society. We have transited from the Algerian society to an industrial society to a knowledge society. What is doing? We have also missed the knowledge society, and that's why our GDP has come down from 31% to 1%. We cannot afford to miss the knowledge society, and that's why my address to all of you, and be information literate. Second thing you see, when you get out of the school, many of you get good job. Maybe campus recruitment is there, you will apply for the job, will good job. And you have some time, excellent time in the life. Now those who pass through this period, I only give them the, my second advice. Avoid complacency. Don't become complacent when things are very good. If your income is more, very high, safe. I am seeing the people in this city, they are earning five-figure salary, six-figure salary, but they are not able to save. And in 10 years, they are burned out. Uh, what will happen to that? So, save back time will come. At that time, conserve your energy. So, avoid complacency. I see Many of us are too much complacent, and especially when you go through the past time. And that is where the bad time comes. <coughs> bad time comes because in the good time we become complacent. That is what the, you see, those who know the Hindi, I can just say that, you see, two lines of Kabir Das. Dukh mein sumiran sab kare, sukh mein kare na koe. Jo sukh mein sumiran kare, to dukh kahe ko hai. In bad times, everybody remembers the God. In the good times, nobody. Those people who remember the God, in the good times, why the bad time will come? So, I say sumiran means complacency. You see, when you become complacent, you forget God. That's what I'm trying to say. So, avoid complacency. Third, and that is my last advice. 
You see, life is not a bed of roses always. It is difficult. When you will do well, sometimes in the life bad times will come. Unavoidable. And remember, when bad time will come, it will come from all directions. You will have family problem, you have a this is the thing, you have environmental problem, many other things will come, you will have a health problem, this is what happens. What to do? When bad time it becomes, we become desperate. So what I say, my third advice, when bad time comes, low lie, pray to God. Don't become desperate. Wait and hope, good time will come back. So be literate, avoid complacency, and wait and hope. These are the three advice I give you. If you remember throughout your life, in your, any profession you are there, you will be boldly facing the future in much better way. I again repeat, next 20 years is a great opportunity for this country in any sphere of activity, whether economic, whether social, whether technological, any area, we have a great opportunity, but we should not be complacent. We must seize the opportunity, and if you all can seize the opportunity, 21st century will be India's century, and towards this and the few things which I have stated you will keep in the mind and if you can put it into the action, I am quite confident that all of your future will be bright and country's future will be bright. Thank you very much.